Hey guys, welcome to the Wicked Gate. I'm Benjamin, and uh, thanks so much for watching this video. Two weeks ago, we started a series on why we have the Bible, and I'm going to continue in that vein tonight. Um, in that first video, I talked about how the Bible's powerful and how that's important, and in the blog post that weekend, Meredith uh, talked about how to really dig into God's Word and get a whole lot out of it. So if you haven't read that post yet, make sure you head over to thewicketgate.org and read it before you continue with this video. But let's get into it. Another reason why we have the Bible is because we are supposed to learn more about God. As I talked about in the video on prayer, God designed us to have an intimate relationship with us, and so we're supposed to pray to do that. But the other facet to that relationship is reading the Bible. It's God's complete word to man, and it's how we can learn about him. Just like any human relationship, you have to learn about the other parties involved if it's going to work out. You, it can't just be a one-sided thing. When you read the Bible, you can learn about the Almighty God Most High and grow closer to Him. Here are just five things that I picked out that you can learn from the Bible about God. Uh, number one is we learn about God's holy standard. God set up this standard that's so high and it's so far beyond anything we could possibly meet. When we read the Old Testament law, Galatians 3 tells us that the law was our tutor. It was designed to show us that we needed to put our faith in the coming Christ, the Messiah, and to show us that we couldn't be made perfect and justified on our own. The law is so detailed that no person who wasn't perfect could possibly keep all of it, and that's why we needed a Savior. And this standard that was set up in the law is actually representative of God's holiness. It is just completely unattainable for humans, and we needed God to save us from it. The second thing we can learn about God is about his love, his matchless love. He has so much love, we can't even fathom it. He sent his only son. As, as 1 John 4.10 says, In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation means he literally took the place and took the punishment that we deserve for our sins. Uh, just a couple verses sooner, in 1 John 4, 8, it says that he... Just a few verses sooner, in 1 John 4, 8, it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Not only does God just show us his love, he actually is love. And his love is designed to naturally flow into us, but for that to happen, we have to believe in him and then develop our relationship with him. The third thing that we can learn about God is about his perfect plan. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, after punishing them, God promised them a Messiah. And all throughout the Old Testament, we read about people looking forward to the coming Messiah. In Hebrews 11, we read about Moses, who lived way before Jesus was born on the earth, and it says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward." Just as people who lived in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the Messiah, you and I are saved by looking back at the Messiah who came, Jesus. Um, we read about God's plan. One of the most famous verses in Scripture is John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As in Romans 10, 9, and 10 say, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses unto salvation. This is all part of God's plan to bring us into a relationship with him. A fourth thing that we learn about from scripture about God is about the glorious home that he is actively preparing for us. In John 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples and preparing them for his death. And he tells them, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus is preparing a place for us, a home for us in heaven. In Hebrews 11, where we were just talking about Moses, we read about people who saw God's promises afar off and embraced them, confessing that they were just strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 14 says, For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. The homeland this is talking about is heaven. Further down in verse 16 it says, But now they desire a better that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. We learn a lot about heaven as we read scripture. We're told the streets are paved with gold and the gates have diamonds and on them. And it's this glorious, beautiful city that God is preparing for us. And if we trust in him, it's going to be our home for eternity. A fifth thing that we can learn about God is his uniqueness. I don't mean this in the common sense of the word, like just, oh yeah, you're kind of different than everyone else. Merriam-Webster actually defines uniqueness as being the only one. We know from scripture that there is only one God. As Isaiah 41.4 says, Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last, I am he. Revelation 22.13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God is the one and only God. He always has been and always will be. In order to have a healthy relationship with this eternal holy God, we must grow closer to him. It cannot be stagnant. And to grow closer to him, we have to read his word that he gave us in the Bible. So read your Bible and grow closer to the living God.